Hi, I'm Loretta Bruning. I'm founder of the Inner Mammal Institute, author of Habits of a Happy Brain. The brain chemicals that make us happy are inherited from earlier animals. And when we understand what turns these chemicals on in the state of nature, it's so easy to understand what makes us happy and why we're not happy all the time. Why is love important in evolution? Natural selection built a brain that rewards you with a good feeling when you do something that's good for the survival of your genes. There's no free love in the state of nature. Animals have to work really hard for any reproductive opportunity that they get. And once they have babies, there's a very high death rate among their children. And so anything that promotes uh, mating opportunity and survival of the young is what our brain rewards us for. I focus on what are called the happy chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphin. And these are the chemicals that make us feel good, which is distinct from the sex chemicals. When you understand the job that they do in the state of nature, you'll really see why. But I'm gonna give you the mammal view. Dopamine is the chemical that makes you feel good when you find something that meets your needs. So I call it the I can get it feeling. So if I'm a monkey and I see fruit in the distance and I think I can get that fruit, then my dopamine turns on and that motivates me to go toward it. And the closer I get, the more dopamine I get. When I get that fruit, go for it, go for it, go for it, I feel good. Now, once I have enough food, because it's so easy to meet your food needs in the modern world, let's say you look around for possible romantic opportunities, and when you see someone that meets your needs the way your individual template has defined it, that turns on your dopamine. That's the I can get it feeling. The closer you get to the anticipated reward, the more dopamine you get. So I can get it, I can get it, I can get it. That's the great dopamine feeling. The problem, alas, let's say once the monkey gets that fruit in the distance, their dopamine stops. And so, alas, there is that feeling that once you get the reward you've anticipated, the dopamine stops. <laughs> and that is rather frustrating in the romantic department. Oxytocin is called a love chemical. So oxytocin is really the feeling that we call trust in our human brains. But in the animal world, oxytocin rewards a mammal for sticking with the herd. So when you are with others that, that you trust, then you can lower your guard because they're all helping you avoid predators. We're designed to make careful decisions about who to trust. And it's so fascinating to see how animals make those careful decisions. If you're a gazelle or a gazelle with one stripe on your butt, and if you go with the herd of gazelles with two stripes on their butt, uh-uh, they're gonna exclude you. And then when a lion comes along, you're gonna get eaten. So animals make careful decisions about their social alliances. And that's why in the human world, we invest so much effort in making social alliances and our brain rewards us with oxytocin when it's like, ah, that person has got my back. That person will be there for me. Trust you. So in the animal world, if you trust badly, you could be gone in a second. And that's why that don't trust makes such a huge circuit in your brain that people are so overly hypersensitive to anything that disappointed them in the past. So the next chemical is serotonin. This is the complicated one. What happens in the state of nature, in fact, is that if you compete effectively, then you have a little bit of a one-up feeling. And that promotes survival, because that gives you the confidence to assert yourself. I love you, baby. To go for that next piece of fruit and to go for that next potential mating opportunity, instead of fearing that the bigger baboon is going to bite you when you assert yourself. You feel good when you're in the one-up position because your brain releases a little bit of serotonin, but alas, that serotonin is metabolized in a few minutes, and so you look for a way to feel good again. How does this apply to love? Is that when you get the attention of a special someone who 
in your mind has higher status, then it's like, wow, that person likes me. So you're telling me there's a chance. It's that feeling, oh, I have confidence in my own survival skills. I can assert myself enough to meet my survival needs, and that feeling will soon be gone, so I need to stimulate it again and again. We can learn to love better, and I think the first thing is being honest with yourself about your own impulses. So a new way of looking at it is to accept that your brain is looking for rewards based on a pathway that you believe leads to rewards. Love feels good because it stimulates our happy chemicals. It gives us a lot of happy chemicals at once, but then the happy chemicals dip. We tend to blame our partner, but the more we understand our own brain, the more we can take responsibility for our own happy chemicals, stop blaming our partner, and just have a relationship that lasts and have support rather than conflict. So we don't have to agree on everything. We have to just come up with a way that we can both get that stepping toward reward feelings together, but not necessarily agreeing on every step of reality.